Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, we, we're with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet, my partner, John Coleman. And uh, it's always great to see you guys. I uh, just never know what we're going to talk about, but it's going to be something interesting. Well, thanks. Thanks, Art. <laughs> it sounds like I've got the, the lead here. Yeah, I'm just the fanboy. I'm just the fanboy. Take it away, John. Hey, John, uh, by the way, it's always good to see you. But now I happen to know, because I was a guest on your radio show, we can also hear you. Tell us about this. Now, I always think of when you branch out into other media, I think of um, Howard Stern, the king of all media. <laughs> was that your intention in, in going on radio, to be the king of all media, or are you just having a good time? Well, I'm working on my Tonys and my Oscars, but I haven't been on Broadway or in a movie yet, so uh, that's the future. But <laughs> as, as with this show, you guys, um, I was just so happy to be asked to join because at this stage in life, which is what the show is all about, celebrating Act Two, I could be sitting here without having a video commentary with you. I could be sitting here without a radio show, and I could sit, be also sitting here without writing my articles, and what's left? Golf and death? You know? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I feel very, very privileged to be on this show. Uh, we have a great time, obviously. Seems we still have our wits about us. And so um, there's a local radio station here in New York out of New Rochelle, which is right in the town where we went to high school, John, um, called WVOX, Voice of the People. And um, it's run and owned by uh, Bill O'Shaughnessy, kind of a local uh, landmark of a, of a, of a rock and tour. And um, he has a lot of good shows there, a lot of music shows, rock and roll shows, sports shows. And I just approached him once by email. I said, you know, why don't we have a really good interview show? I'll, I'll talk about the Bronx and Westchester and what happened in the 50s. You know, kind of a nostalgia show like Garrison Kaler's Lake Wobegon days. And he just said, when do you want to start? Uh, how about Wednesday? I'll give you Wednesdays at 11 o'clock. Great slot. <laughs> Wow. He says, you, uh, you can do once a week? And I said, I think so, because it was with reference to a book my late brother and I write, wrote called Almost Golden, which was about growing up in the Bronx in the 1950s, uh, which I left when I was 10 years old. But believe me, I, I remember more about the Bronx in the 1950s and where I ate dinner last, uh, last night. Um, so that book, which we wrote, was a wonderful memoir talking all about our little section of the Bronx, the North Bronx. And I thought, well, I could use that. I could get away with using that for week after week. And my brother will come on um, before he died. He, he did a couple of times. And uh, But he then O'Shaughnessy said, well, you know, you can have anybody on you want as a guest. So then I started to, I started to realize that since I have carte blanche, this can be like a real NPR show, a serious show with serious interviews, of intelligent people whom I respect and would love to talk to because my own interests are wide ranging and I know my audience interests are wide ranging. So it wasn't gonna just be a nostalgia show. Hey, remember drinking Coca-Cola at the, uh, the uh, um, going to the movies and seeing the cereals? That was gonna be on it too. But I also wanted to have guests who would talk about uh, all sorts of subjects um, on a weekly basis. And I just have a list of some of the shows I've done. We had Linda Mena, who was um, uh, Chanteuse on the Great American Songbook. We had David Mickus, uh, who wrote a biography of Stanley, Br Stanley Kubrick, who was a Bronx boy. Terence Winch, who was the poet, Irish poet laureate here in America, uh, lives in Washington, D.C. Um, uh, uh, Michael Pitts, who's written several books on Western movies. Uh, Scott Peoples, who wrote a biography of the man in the crowd, Edgar Allan Poe. Um, we had a, a, a biographer of Joe DiMaggio. We talked about the polio pioneers of the 1950s, which I happen to be one of. Um, we talked to Lisa Bernbach, who is the, the author of the ha Preppy Handbook. We've had um, Ali McGraw, who uh, grew up in Westchester County and was in, of course, Goodbye Columbus, which was photographed all over Westchester County. Um, I had uh, Chaz Palmentieri on, the uh, actor whom we all know from A Bronx Tale. 
Um, so, and I've had John Coleman who talked about his move uh, from uh, the Bronx to Westchester and also I invited him on again to talk about his crazy hazy days in WPIX TV. So I'm very, very proud of the authors I've had on. We talked about Toscanini. Uh, we had a show on JFK before he became president. So uh, Dion and the Belmont, so Dion, Dion, not the Belmonts, Dion is coming on. So um, this with this uh, week of Marilyn May, the uh, great cabaret singer who was 93 years old. So it's been a ball. You know, John, um, as a friend and a fan, I've listened to most of uh, your shows on VOX, WVOX, and um, the great thing is that here I am in California, and WVOX is a local radio station that has a footprint that probably reaches halfway through Manhattan, <laughs> and maybe to White Plains. It's not a very big radio station, but it can be heard internationally uh, on the internet. I think it's WVOX.com, if I'm not mistaken. So you've got a, a, a worldwide audience, and you're bringing, even though the original focus was growing up in the Bronx, moving to Westchester, what you're doing is you're bringing, I think, the world, bringing the Bronx to the world. It's not about the Bronx, but that seems to be the impetus for finding the people. I love the fact that Ali McGraw grew up in, in that area. I had no idea. You know, my, uh, my wife, who uh, uh, was born and raised in the Bronx, uh, uh, was a groupie for Dion Demucci. Her mom used to, uh, Dion of the Velmonts, she used to take him out to uh, wherever he was appearing, uh, and yeah. they'd take the subway all over the place just to see him. <coughs> uh, and and he's, still, he's still with us today, uh, well, which, was, uh, which is really time, nice. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry by the time he will have a new album with some of the greatest rock guitarists um, uh, like Joe Bobosimano and others uh, coming out just about the time this is going to air and he's going to be on my show to promote that uh, album uh, in November. Um, so it's, uh, it, it, yeah, it's been great anyway. But, but John, what you just said is true. We started out, I started out thinking, oh, I'll just talk about the Bronx and Westchester growing up and, and candy stores and football games. But if I have somebody like Ali McGraw on, the, the tag there, the hang is just that she was born in Westchester and raised there in Bedford. And um, Toscanini lived in Riverdale for a while. So it may be the most specious of reasons to have such people uh, on to talk about. Um, a Vietnam War, as I recall, took place. Uh, it was of great concern to us growing up in the 50s and 60s about being drafted. So consequently, I read stories about the, uh, the Vietnam War, the civil rights struggle, which was paramount in the 1950s and 60s. So the Bronx and Westchester, well, the, the term almost golden, what it means when my brother and I wrote the book was that for us, it was almost a golden time in history. Yeah. And that's not for everybody, especially if you were black in the South. But for us, it was, and I say almost, because we also had the polio hanging over us children until the vaccine came along. We had the atomic bomb. We had the McCarthy era going on, sure. which, which was just causing enormous chaos in American homes, uh, watching this new 12-inch television screen, watching the McCarthy hearings. So we lived um, in, a, in a period that was almost golden, but it sure was interesting and exciting. You know, I like Ike. I hate Nixon, JFK forever. Um, fascinating time to grow up. Yeah, it's kind it of was. interesting, uh, John. So you're saying that um, uh, the the primary uh, requirement is that at least you must have passed over the Tappan Zee Bridge. That's good. Yep. <laughs> at one point <laughs> in your in your life. Um, yeah, I, excuse me. Be, 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 before John ch chimes in with something even more uh, uh, appropriate, uh, is there a link to this on your uh, website? Yes. Okay, so uh, would, you, would you please let us know uh, how, how they can get that information? Yeah, or it's just go to johnmariani.com. That's my website. Then you can read free of charge my weekly newsletter. And on there, there is a tag also to this show. Um, there also is a tag, a link to the uh, WVOX show. And there's, an, uh, there's also a link to the archive for Almost Gold. And so you can listen to everything I've done for the past year. It's all labeled with who was who was on Ali McGraw was on in October and Dion in November. Um, so yeah, so go to johnmariani.com, 
and then you'll find the links to both the show and the archive and to this show. Um, very simple. Free of charge, too. Stupid me. Boing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, John, it is a great show. It's, it's a lot of fun. And you're a great conversationalist, so it's a, a wonderful uh, to hear you converse with all these people. They open up, um, whether they're talking about something, a book they wrote, or whether they're talking about their life, uh, like Ali McGraw, they open up, and it's just always a lot of fun to listen to. But I, well, be yeah. before we go... I promise them, all of my guests, that I'm not going to ask them the same 10 questions they've been asked before. And specifically, Ali McGraw said, I don't want to go over all of that again, how I broke in and so forth. I said, all right, let's talk about other things. And we got into the fact that she is half Jewish and didn't really know it for a long time. And her father was an artist and a very rough, tough father. She had a tough childhood. She grew up poor. This is not what you read about in the fan magazines. Um, what she likes to have for breakfast and what, what it was like to work with uh, Steve McQueen. I said, as a matter of fact, I said, I'd like to have you back on and go through every one of your movies, which is about 12 or 15, and tell me about those movies. Um, and the same thing um, when um, when I had on Chaz Palminteri. So how did you write The Bronx Tale? How did you know? Um, I, I try to ask him about numerous other things that were more insightful, and it, and it works because I'm interested in those things too. Anybody can get the background. You can go to Wikipedia and look at Ali McGraw's life if you want. Um, so yeah. all of that. Um, I try to stay away from that. Well, I, I just wanted to say that I think an appropriate closing here is Art mentioned um, the Tappan Zee Bridge. And uh, before we go, I want to just bring us up to date that the Tappan Zee Bridge is now, if I'm not mistaken, called the Mario Cuomo Bridge. Yes. Unfortunately, not because I have anything against Mario Cuomo, who is a great, great. No, governor. it's just His son, but anyway, times change. So that's that's what I want to leave us with. Times change. But your radio show does, is just captures everything. Thanks so much. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our Web page. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.